Uh, first of all, what do you think Vladimir Putin is up to? He's up to asserting his role in the Middle East, uh, which is the first time Russia has had that role since uh, Anwar Sadat kicked out the Russians in 1973. He's propping up Bashar Assad. He wants to protect his base uh, there to make sure that that is uh, secure. And he doesn't care who he has to kill in order to do it. You just mentioned that we have reports of an air attack on Homs where there is no ISIS and it's uh, killed a number of innocent men, women and children. We're, in fact, playing some from Eurovision some of that video right now as we speak. Uh, Senator, I wanted to play the Deputy National Security Advisor, Ben Rhodes, speaking at uh, Atlantic Magazine's conference today because the White House and other officials at the State Department are trying to downplay this Russian move. Let's watch. Everybody's looking at Putin as if this is some offensive maneuver. Again, they've had bases in Syria for a very long time. This is their principal client state in the Arab world. It's been collapsing. He's trying to prop it up. I think that's hardly someone who's in a strong position. Is Vladimir Putin, in fact, in a weak position, as you've heard some recent testimony from David Petraeus pointing out that he's broke, he's spending money on military engagements, that he could be uh, going to the banks for more money with a very poor cash flow coming up in the next couple of years? Yeah, but don't forget, David Petraeus advocated uh, very strongly that we establish a, a no-fly zone, a buffer zone, take down Bashar Assad's uh, barrel bombing capabilities and uh, significant escalation of our behavior. Also, David Petraeus took note that in the past, dictators who have domestic problems sometimes uh, strike out. I can only, uh, David Ignatius' column this morning, the most respected diplomat that I've known, Ryan Crocker, said, Russia has played a horrible hand brilliantly. We folded what could have been a pretty good hand. The Russians were able to turn a defensive position into a, an offensive one because we were so completely absent. I can't describe it any better than Ryan Crocker has. Well, and in fact, as you correctly point out, what Petraeus was also testifying to your committee last week is that, you know, sometimes out of weakness, when cornered in the short term, Vladimir Putin could be even more dangerous. And we may be seeing signs of that, in fact, today. Uh, do you think that the U.S. was completely blindsided by his recent diplomatic and military moves? I don't know why they were, but obviously they were because... Uh, John Kerry and his spokesperson said it's not clear what Russians, Russia's intentions are. It was perfectly clear what Russia's intentions are. To prop up Bashar Assad, the father of ISIS, to make sure that they have a secure base in the region, to make sure that they are now in a very prominent position in the Middle East. And by the way, other countries are adjusting to that. The Saudis just bought $7 billion worth of uh, equipment from them. Uh, and even Bibi Netanyahu, who just went to Moscow. All of these, they are adjusting to an absence of American leadership and an assertion and of influence in the region by Vladimir Putin. We have reporting also from our uh, Pentagon producer, Courtney Kuby, that the way we first found out about these airstrikes is that a Russian uh, defense attache in Baghdad went to the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, uh, basically knocked on the door, and you know better than anyone how fortified that, that encampment is, and asked to speak to someone and say, we're about to launch airstrikes. Is this the de-conflicting that was promised to us? We've got planes in the air. They've got planes in the air now. What about this alleged coordination that was supposed to take place where we would get more than an hour's warning that they are in the air? I think it's a sign of the contempt with which uh, Putin holds us. And by the way, what we should be doing and saying to the Russians is that we're going to fly anywhere, anytime, anyhow we want to in order to stem the, f the flow of ISIS. And we also are going to stop uh, Bashar Assad's aero b barrel bombing and you stay out of the way. Instead, we're talking about trying to have some accommodation with the uh, Russian aircraft. Again, uh, incredible sign of weakness. Uh, we understand now that uh, Secretary Kerry and Lavrov, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, talked in New York today by phone that Se Secretary Kerry expressed concern about the airstrikes today, said that they would not 
uh, interfere with U.S.-led coalition strikes in the era, and that they had to figure out a way to deconflict. I mean, you're in a situation now where there could be an accidental engagement between Russian and American planes. Well, first of all, the Russians should stay out of the way. Uh, second of all, isn't it fascinating that uh, Kerry keeps calling Lavrov? He called him three times last week as the buildup went on to find out what was going on. I don't think he got much uh, of an answer. Isn't it clear yet that Putin is going to do what he wants to do because he believes he can do it with impunity? Is this the way we're supposed to... Uh, respond, the Russians respond to our pleas to work uh, deconflict by the, the, the scenario that you just described that took place in Baghdad. It's, it's really remarkable. Uh, what, and what about the fact that just 48 hours ago, the president was meeting for the first time in, in a formal setting with Vladimir Putin, the first time in two years. Uh, was this not discussed between the two men? I don't know, but I know this, that my friends in Ukraine are very concerned that we might be throwing them under the bus because obviously the reason why there hadn't been meetings in the past was because of Vladimir Putin's dismemberment of the Ukraine. Let me, let me emphasize, Andrea, he's not, Putin is not strong. He, we have, have overwhelming advantage of him, but what he's doing, as Ryan Crocker said, he's playing his cards skillfully with exactly his goals in mind, and he's pursuing them. We don't even have a strategy. Remember a year ago, uh, the President of the United States, our goal was to degrade and, and destroy ISIS. Can you see any real significant uh, progress in that area? Of course not. Well, in fact, there was a bipartisan House Homeland Security Committee investigation, which we reported on yesterday, which said that they have uh, doubled the number of foreign fighters, foreign fighter recruits, now from 100 countries, that this includes an estimated 250 Americans, uh, some of whom 50, an estimated 50, have come back into the U.S. Do you think our borders have not been secured, uh, you know, adequately uh, in terms of ISIS recruitment? I don't, uh, I don't know how they came back, but uh, if they were American citizens or European citizens, all they had to do was get a, a visa. Uh, they didn't have to get a visa. All they had to do was have a plane ticket. So I would imagine that most of these people have come back by just getting on an airliner and flying back to the United States, uh, uh, which is much easier. And that is a real danger. And I think that Mr. Baghdadi, with all these refugees, would very likely, I'm not positive, but very likely say to some of his fighters, hey, join the, join the tide of refugees and you'll be hearing from us. Senator, what is your bottom line with the news today of what Russia is up to? What should the administration do? The administration should develop, first of all, a coherent strategy and recognize that Bashar Assad is the enemy, not just ISIS, and recognize the fact that Russia is now acting in the most aggressive fashion that they've acted since the beginning of the Cold War. We have to have a strategy. We have to be steadfast. We have to take the advice of people like General Petraeus last week, and we have to understand that right now there is a, a, a series of crises unlike we have seen since the end of World War II. And that's the opinion of Henry Kissinger and Madeleine Albright and Brent Scowcroft and everybody that it isn't just mine. We now have more refugees at any time since the end of World War II. It's time to reassert American leadership and stop leading from behind.